sizing down a waterproof jacket. Uh, today I will show one of the simplest way which uh, involves removing fabric from the area of armpit uh, along the sleeve and along the side of the seam. First step is to define how much you need to remove. That uh, is happening when the client is uh, present. Uh, you just see how much you, you need to remove from here. Uh, and uh, uh, approximately uh, mark uh, how far down the sleeve and down the side uh, it needs to go. Uh, then the next step would be once you know you can uh, write down these measurements. Uh, and the uh, next step is to the, you turn the jacket inside out. And because it's a waterproof garment, the seams are taped. And that's the first challenge uh, in altering the garment. So, so step one, removing the seam tape. First thing you do is uh, you warm up uh, with the iron. And I use some steam. I don't think it's uh, any damaging to the fabric or the tape itself. And you just start peeling right uh, next to the mark where you need to, the tape to be removed. Now, as I made a decision, I continue the same way. Okay, now uh, I freed up one end and now it would be a little bit faster. Uh, now you could, uh, you can warm up with steam much bigger area and right away peel the tape. It would, uh, depending on the tape, it would be leaving some sticky residues. Uh, behind but it's kind of okay so just keep warming the tape and removing it and when you reach the other mark on the other end you just cut the tape so now uh, the seam can lay flat we have seam allowance free uh, and uh, we know how much we need to remove uh, in the armpit area and then we just smoothly bring the line to uh, meet with the actual line of the garment. When you reach the uh, sleeve seam, uh, you can turn. Uh, the line doesn't have to go straight, straight, uh, so you can make a little bit of a turn. So here is our new seam. Um, if you um, are uh, not exactly happy and you see something like, maybe I don't like this uh, being not exactly smooth, I can correct it. I don't need to open it again. I just pass the new line uh, as long as it's uh, within the garment, not within seam allowance, I don't have to open it. And I can just smoothen the line uh, to make it perfect, which I will do. And now this line looks better. And when, once you're happy with the line, the next steps would be cut it off. Uh, of the seam allowance to the to, to the width of five millimeters approximately or to the width of whatever it was uh, in the original seam and iron and tape it again. Oh, we cut, I cut it down, keeping the width of the seam allowance as an original seam. In this case, it's not a lot that uh, I'm removing, but it still uh, will make a difference uh, in the fit for the client. Uh, the next thing is to iron the seam allowance to one side, same side as it was ironed before, because it will just make easier the application of the tape. It's, um, you can, of course, uh, try to apply the tape while um, also pressing the seam, but it would be just easier to press the seam and then apply the tape. Uh, a little bit of a tricky thing is that uh, we have a remnants of the glue from the previously uh, applied tape. So I would recommend using your ironing device directly uh, on this kind of uh, sticky surface. So in order for the iron not to stick to the glue of the uh, previously applied seam tape, I would use um, this uh, thin transfer paper that I use for transferring the patterns, but I think something like uh, cookie sheets or waxed paper could work. 
uh, the same way. So it just should be thin enough in order for the heat to go through and then uh, it shall work. Uh, but there is one warning uh, that will come with it. Uh, you can see that uh, as I'm pressing, uh, it, it sticks as well. You see these darker areas. Uh, it's where the glue of the tape um, has glued to the uh, paper. So that's, <laughs> that's why we don't want the iron touching it because this whole thing would be on the iron. So first press whole thing, uh, pull the side uh, apart so that the, and then flatten with the finger the seam allowance push the paper on it, go over it. You can even use steam if you feel like, because it will go partially through uh, the paper. So it should work. Here the uh, slip platform comes handy when we go around curved, curved places. So we can still uh, push the seam allowance where we want it to go through without uh, creating, without ironing some creases in them in the fabric itself. Because we can just be on the edge of the platform and applying heat just to that area of the seam allowance that we are working with. So now, important thing is not to try to peel off the paper while it is cold, because uh, some paper might separate and stay on the garment, which we do not want. So again, warm gently the area, Pull it back, warm, pull back, warm. You can do it in a continuous move, actually. Oh. It's like here I didn't press that much. Let me repress press it again a little bit here. All right. So when the seam is pressed, we can actually, if we want, on this stage, you can assess uh, how the garment looks like and you can actually ask the client to come and try it on before finishing it with the tape because if you need to remove more then you will have to remove your own tape and remove so just to save the time but if you feel sure that this is the result you want uh, now the next step would be reapplying the tape and uh, one a little bit tricky thing about applying the tape now, um, this seam was not a straight seam from which we were removing something. So you see, on one side we have much more uh, curvy, uh, much more, much more fabric than on this side. This, uh, this side of the garment is more flat, and this is more curvy. It's this uh, due to the fact that the seam um, of the underarm was not exactly symmetric. So it is actually. Uh, if you try to uh, distribute evenly the fabric on both sides, you see the seam is curved. So when we would be applying the tape, we don't want to tape over these uh, little creases and uh, make them permanent. So we will have to pay attention to that. And I will show you what I do in these cases. There is no perfect solution for that, but there, there are ways to do it a little nicer uh, than just going over in a straight line and uh, trapping all these little folds. So now we just apply the tape, we overlap the old tape with the new one uh, by five millimeters and uh, we just go in a regular manner. So once we taped relatively straight uh, piece and are approaching the more difficult one, uh, what I do uh, is um, I apply the tape first to the part, um, the convex part. So let me just make it a little more visually uh, obvious. So this is a convex part, everything that is below this part, and this is a concave part above because uh, at the concave part the tape will need to stretch i apply the uh, tape to a little more flat area and then uh, i do the a special operation to apply to the straight uh, to the more uh, spread out part so i put the garment more lying flat how it naturally would go or oh, for the for this half of the garment and i apply the tape over this part. I also apply it over the seam uh, allowance itself. 
first over the garment, like I stick this side, then over the seam allowance a little bit, but not yet to the upper part, let's say. Yeah, this could be tricky because there is also a lot of thickness of the fabric accumulated, especially where the uh, another seam is going perpendicular to the area you are taping. So it's important to use the tip of the iron and get into uh, full contact where the tape is uh, overlapping the seam. So go slowly, tiny section by tiny section, making sure that it actually got stuck to the fabric. So once I pass the more uh, technical area of taping that requires more attention, I just continue first uh, at the straight line of the seam. And then uh, as the last operation, I will return to apply this part. At the end uh, of our tape, I overlap again the existing tape and just finish it off. So now the last part is this curved part. First of all, I use the tape that is slightly stretchy. Uh, it's much, much easier to go around the curves with this kind of tape. Uh, and it's also thinner tape than the regular uh, three layer um, seam tape, even though this is also three layer, but it's a three layer, lightweight three layer. Uh, basically it's baking is uh, more stretchy, the fabric part here. So that's the first um, key to the curves. But even if you don't have a, a, that kind of tape, I think you can still successfully apply um, the tape. So now I try to lay flat the curved part and you see how much more curvy it is than other sides that was relatively flat. Um, potentially I could just stretch this tape and, and, pull and apply it, but to relieve a little bit of tension here, I will do a small triangular incisions in the edge of it, um, but um, far enough from the edge of the a seam allowance so that there is no potential leak coming through but just to relieve the uh, some tensions on the very uh, on the very outer edge on the outer edge of the tape just at even distances tiny tiny triangles why triangles i could just do straight incisions uh, but straight incisions will have 90 degrees corners which are more prone to peeling uh, through the wear, so um, this kind of um, uh, less, uh, so the angle less than 90 degrees would be uh, less prone to peel over time, and especially in the armpit, this is the area uh, where there is a lot happening in the garment, so just uh, to make it serve a little longer, I think the triangular cutouts are better. Okay, that should be enough. <laughs> I will remove this tiny triangle so they don't get stuck while we are ironing. And now as we cut it, we just do the same operation, but trying to carefully distribute the stretch of the tape over the curvature of the fabric. Being close to the edge of the sleeve platform helps. It helps again just not to create creases in the fabric with the iron because we also have, uh, we are using the household iron, which is huge. Just press hard and tiny section by tiny section go over, spreading out the tape, making sure it sticks really well. Because again, uh, the armpit area is a high wear area, so the tape uh, should be well applied. So you see, probably, yeah when I stretch uh, the fabric to lay flat, these uh, triangles are opening, becoming bigger than what we cut out. Also one thing with the tape is um, once it's warm, it can unstick as well. So you apply, <laughs> to apply it, you need to warm it up, but then if so uh, to fully, fully apply it, you need to cool it, actually cool it down. So in the difficult areas, uh, kind of remove the heat until it's um, stabilized in its position. If there is something pushing it up, like 
this bulge of the seams. Uh, just uh, help it to get stuck and cool down before uh, releasing it. Because as you've seen, we apply the tape with the heat, but also we can remove the tape with the heat. So effectively in the seam tapement machine, I think after the uh, hot uh, surface that pushes the seam tape down on the seam, there is a, also heat sink of some kind uh, rolling right after so as to fix the freshly applied tape so that it doesn't uh, unstick immediately. So here you see uh, pretty good results. We have a very curved part here and tape applied and pretty flat part on this side. And it all sits fine. So one thing about the, this uh, curvature. In this case, I needed to remove only a one and a half centimeter total uh, from the armpit. But if you need to remove more and your underarm seam is curved, uh, it could be problematic to just follow the same seam uh, and uh, take from there uh, because uh, more you remove from the concave part uh, and more you remove from convex part, uh, more difference in length uh, between these lines uh, happens. If you go only one centimeter away, you can kind of get away with it like I did in this case. But if it's uh, four centimeters on each side that you need to remove, let's say, um, it wouldn't match the length of the cut here and cut here would not match. This would be much bigger, um, much, yeah, this would be much bigger. So one way would be to also remove the extra from this seam uh, open it in the same way, removing the tape, uh, removing how much you need to remove in order to match with the new line that you want to create here. Another way that I have used, but I don't have an example at hand, is um, to ignore the existing curved line and to find a straight line on the garment that it would be easier to remove from. So for example, here, if I need to remove a lot, maybe I will choose the line that just runs like that. It would create new seam on the back of the garment, new seam uh, and line on the sleeve itself, but then uh, it would be much, much easier job for you in removing the thing. Uh, so you, you could potentially, like once you have your straight line, you just fold along straight line, remove as much as you need to remove, uh, and then tape the new seam. Uh, I don't know. You, <laughs> I don't know how clear it is on on this example without actually showing how it's done. But maybe maybe you get what I mean, <laughs> and maybe maybe it can uh, help you uh, in the case uh, where you need to remove a lot from the jacket. If somebody bought an extra large jacket on sale and want to make it small size, you need to do a lot of work in order to bring it down so much. Mm, so this is one way, just uh, finding a new straight line, not a, using existing seam uh, of the garment and removing from this straight line. That would create yeah new lines on the garment, but who, who cares? It, it works. I have done it on few jackets, and also it works in the garments if in the waterproof garment in the arm, uh, pit, in the armpit sleeve there is armpit zipper, so that. You don't mess with zipper, you don't remove anything around the zipper, you just create a line from which you remove the necessary amount right next to the uh, existing line. So, uh, so that's it. Hope this uh, was useful to you and you will be able to adjust your own jacket or some jacket for your client to uh, make it work for them better. Um, yeah, see you in the next tutorial.